Now we are going to learn the mesh analysis or a loop analysis. Firstly, we are differentiating the mesh analysis with respect to the Kirchhoff's law. In the Kirchhoff's law, we are considering the branch currents, but in the mesh analysis, we are considering the loop currents. And through the Kirchhoff's law or through the branch, only one current is flowing in the Kirchhoff's law. But in the mesh analysis, it can be one or more than the one current through the one branch. Then one advantage of the mesh analysis is number of unknowns get reduced in the mesh analysis compared to the Kirchhoff's law. Before learning the mesh analysis, we have to learn the steps for the mesh analysis or solving the problems of the mesh analysis. First step is identify the mesh. First step is identify the mesh. Suppose we are considering this circuit. In that circuit, mesh is simply the loop. We have to consider one loop. Suppose these are the two loops which we have considered. So firstly we have to identify the mesh and we have to give the or assign the direction to the mesh. Simply I am considering the clockwise direction to both the mesh. Then assign the currents in the each mesh. Okay. Assign an unknown current in each mesh. Suppose in one mesh or first mesh we are considering the current is I1 and in the second mesh we are considering the current is I2. Then second step is assign the polarities for the voltage across the branches. That means as we have seen in the KCL and the KVL, if we are considering the current direction like this, which is the clockwise direction, that means current flowing like this in that direction through the resistances and the voltage source in the clockwise direction. So as we have seen in the Kirchhoff's law, we are considering the starting terminal of the current is positive and the end terminal is negative. Similarly here, through the R3 it is starting term is plus, end is minus, similarly here is plus, minus. Then, similarly for the current I2, we have to consider the sign conventions. Simply like this, it is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay? These are the polarities we have given. Then the third step is apply KVL around the mesh. We have to apply the KVL in different mesh in a loop 1 and in loop 2 then the equations which we have find finding out in the uh, different mesh through this equation we have to find the unknown currents so, or by solving the simultaneous equations we will get the currents or value of the currents simply see here as the definition in the mesh through the one register one or more current can be transferred here the R3 register having the current I1 and the I2 also but the direction is opposite see here I1 current is flowing downward and the I2 current is flowing in the upward direction like this suppose I1 is in downward direction and I2 is in upward direction that means the current direction is opposite through the R3 that means simply the final current which is flowing through the R3 is I1 minus I2. So we have to consider the current which is flowing through the R3 is I1 minus I2 during applying the KVL in the different mesh. Now we are applying the KVL here. See here. For the first mesh we are applying the KVL. Apply KVL to loop 1. So therefore suppose we are starting from the voltage source that means here the current is flowing from negative to positive terminal therefore it is rise in voltage and we are considering it is positive voltage and the current direction is from positive to negative so it is fall in voltage and we are considering it is negative resistance is r1 and the current flowing through it is i1 so simply it is i1 into r1 and through the resistor r3 two currents are flowing that means i1 and i2 but when we are finding the equations for the loop 1 then we are considering the current which is flowing through the R3 is I1 minus I2 that means the equation will be like this it is I1 minus I2 into R3 and through the R4 register only I1 current flows or simply it is 
आई वन इन टू आर फोर विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन वी आर अप्लाइंग बाई सॉल्विंग दिस इक्वेशन वी विल गेट वन इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ आई वन आई टू देन नाउ अप्लाई के वी एल टू लुक सेकेंड सिमिलरली सपोज वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम आर टू सो थ्रू आर टू ओनली आई टू कर इट इज फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम द प्लस टू माइनस सो देर फॉर इट इज फॉल इन पोटेंशियल और वी आर कंसिडरिंग इट इज नेगेटिव सो माइनस आई टू इन टू आर टू देन थ्रू वी टू करंट फ्लोइंग लाइक दिस प्लस टू माइनस देर फॉर इट इज फॉल इन वोल्टेज एंड वी आर कंसिडरिंग इट इज नेगेटिव और सिमिलरली हेयर थ्रू द आर फाइव रजिस्टर ओनली आई टू करंट फ्लोज सो इट इज फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम प्लस टू माइनस एंड वी आर कंसिडरिंग इट इज नेगेटिव बिकॉज इट इज फॉल इन वोल्टेज सो इट इज I2 into R5. Then for R3 register, both the currents I1 and I2 are flowing. But we are considering the second loop. Therefore, we are subtracting the current flowing from the first loop. Therefore, we are considering the second 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 loop. Therefore, we are considering the Into R three, which is equal to zero. So through these equations, we can get the values of I one and I two. This is the basic procedure for solving the problems of mesh analysis. Thank you. Now we are going to learn the first problem, which is based on the KCL. Sorry, mesh analysis. Find the current through the five ohm resistor. That means we have to find the current through a five ohm resistor. According to mesh analysis, the first step is identify the mesh and assign a direction to it. Suppose I am considering these three mesh, one, two, and the three, and direction which we have and given to it is it is in the clockwise direction, and the current flowing through it is I one, I two, and the I three. And the second step is we have to give the polarities. to the voltages so simply see here we have considering here the clockwise direction that means current flowing like this in that direction likewise in the clockwise direction so similarly here plus minus plus minus plus minus that means starting term is plus end is minus starting is plus end is minus and in the second mesh or a loop sign conventions will be like this then in the third loop it will be like this plus minus plus minus then the third step is apply the kvl in the different mesh or a loop so first we are applying apply kvl to loop 1 now see here suppose we are starting from the 1 ohm register here the current flowing from plus to minus so it is For input potential, we are considering it is negative. So negative one ohm into I one, or simply it is I one. Then current flowing through three ohm resistor is I one and the I two. But we are considering the loop one. Therefore, we are subtracting the second current or I two from the I one, or simply it is minus, or it is flowing from plus to minus, or it is falling out current or falling potential. Therefore, we are considering it is negative. Or simply it is minus three into I one minus I two. Similarly, through the six ohm resistor, two currents are flowing I one and the I three. But you are considering the first loop. Therefore, it is or current flowing from plus to minus. Therefore, it is negative, and it is negative six into I one minus I three, which is equal to zero. Or for the voltage sources, it is from the negative to positive. So therefore, it is plus ten, which is equal to zero. Then, by solving this equation, we get ten I one minus three I two minus six I three is equal to ten. Suppose this is first equation. Now we are applying the KVL. Apply KVL to loop. 
Now, suppose we are starting from the 2 ohm register. Current flowing from plus to minus, therefore it is negative. Negative 2 into I2. For the 5 ohm register, it is negative 5 into I2. Then for the voltage source, it is from plus to minus, therefore it is a negative 5. Then for the 3 ohm register, two currents are flowing, I1 and the I2. But here we are considering the second loop or we are applying the cable in the second loop. Therefore, we are subtracting the I1 from I2. So simply, register is 3 and the current flowing from plus to minus, therefore it is minus 3 into I2 minus I1 because we are considering the second loop. Therefore, we are subtracting the current in the first loop from the second loop. Okay, so which is equal to 0. By solving this equation, we get 3 I1 minus 10 I2 which is equal to 5. Suppose this is second equation. Now we are applying the KVL in the third loop. Apply KVL to loop 3. Similarly, suppose we are starting from the voltage source 5 volt. So simply current flowing like this in the clockwise direction or from minus to plus. Therefore, it is rising voltage and we are considering it is plus 5. Then for the 4 ohm, it is from plus to minus or it is minus 4 into I3. For this 20 volt source, current is flowing like this in that direction from the negative to positive. Therefore, it is rising voltage and we are considering it is plus. 20. Then for the 6 ohm, two currents are flowing I1 and the I3. But we are considering the third loop, therefore, we are subtracting first current from the third. So simply it is minus 6 into I3 minus I1, which is equal to 0. By solving this equation, we get 6 I1 minus 10 I3, which is equal to minus. 25. Suppose this is third equation. So similarly by solving these equation, three equations, we will get I2 which is equal to point 0.78 ampere. This is the final answer. Here there is no need to find the I1 and the I3 because we have to find the currents of the 5 ohm register and through 5 ohm only I2 current is flowing therefore simply I2 is equal to 0 0.78 ampere by solving these three equations this is the final answer thank you